This is a recorded uh, slide presentation that John Glasscock, Director of Public Works, and Barbara Buffalo, the Sustainability Manager, gave to the City of Columbia Pre-Council on January 5th, 2015. Thank you for your time. Uh, and uh, we are here today to present two very important issues dealing with solid waste. You're looking at a picture of the City of Columbia landfill. Uh, we're standing on top of uh, the trash that you and I and every citizen of Columbia has uh, built. This is the highest point in the city of Columbia, uh, mean sea level elevation. The landfill is approximately 720 acres. 107 acres of the site is permitted to be used as a landfill. The city of Columbia has 106 full-time employees to collect the trash, 24 of which is residential trash collection. Uh, there are two resources in trash management, uh, a place to put it, such as this landfill, and the other is someone to collect it, such as the staffing, which I just described. However, one of the resources that we have today is limited currently, and we'll be discussing that in, later in the presentation. The trend today for recycling for most cities is to achieve a zero uh, waste goal. As of today, the City of Columbia has not set any goals for uh, waste reduction. So why are cities in charge of trash? Uh, what you see here is uh, what we see on a daily basis. Residents uh, get tired of things, they throw them away, uh, but it's the city's responsibility to clean up after people. It's about aesthetics, it's about the environment, it's about our public health. Uh, it, we did not do it, every house would look like a dump. It, it appalls us, it appalls your neighbors. Uh, we have these conditions on a daily basis. We have scavenging in, in from other people trying to get the valuable materials that can be sold out of it. And so today it's just a broken system. This is a picture of the 1920s. It's not much, much different to me. Uh, prior to 1970, this is how Columbia picked up the trash. They would. Go get the peach barrels or your trash bin off your porch, carry it to the truck, and dump it in the truck and carry it back. And then in the 1970s, we moved it to the curb but just put it in a, a plastic bag, much like you saw in the picture before. We have an antiquated system locally. We can do better than this. We're still in the 1920s, and we want to do better, and don't you want us to do better? So what do you see? What about that truck dumping that trash? That's what most people see. But the mountain behind you is where you were standing overlooking the Hinkson Creek in the very first slide. That mountain of trash is five years in the making. The landfill receives enough trash in a single year to fill the Memorial Stadium, home of the Missouri Football Tigers, three and a half times. So we could take the trash every year and fill the stadium three and a half times. That's, that's amazing. Imagine if you could double our recycling rates, how much longer would the landfill cell last? Could last two, three, maybe even four years longer. What would the lines look like then and how much uh, land could we save? The average person throws away about four and a half pounds per day of trash. To help you visualize this, a family of four would set out two and a half bags every week. That's about 130 bags every year. So we as a community need to stop thinking about trash as a waste and start thinking about it as a resource. And the effective gathering of any resource starts with a safe, cost-effective, and incentivized process. In other words, people will have to change their behavior. We need to encourage our residents to view their waste as a resource, and that means going beyond education and awareness. It means creating a system that treats it like a resource. We think of the trash bin as always being the largest receptacle, but what if the recycling bin or receptacle was larger than your trash bin? Our landfill 
has about 50 to 80 years of life left if and only if we're able to get a permit to use it for that. There's always the subject of regulatory agencies and the policies they use. I'll give you an example of coal. Today we have a coal-fired power plant on the business loop. I don't think you can get a permit to rebuild that power plant anywhere anytime in the future and so we have a landfill we're using it today but tomorrow it may become something else. We recycle about 17 percent of the total volume we receive at the landfill. What if we doubled that or reduced what we put in our landfill? How much longer would our landfill rate last at that rate? Council continues to ask about doing more with recycling. We have heard them. We have studied our processes and needs in order to change what we are doing. While we know our system, we only know our system and we need to rethink with you, the council, and our customers to design something better. I would now like to introduce Barbara Buffalo, the City of Columbia's Sustainability Manager. Thank you, John. Um, you know, I'm, I'm happy to be here and happy to work with our Solid Waste Division on thinking about a new system for how we treat waste in the City of Columbia. I know that by improving our system, we could probably improve our recycling rates, which is something that's very important to me and I think important to a lot of community members. When we're reviewing a system, it's always important to look how we currently use that system. So here are some pictures of how we collect trash and recycling in the City of Columbia. If we zoom in here, here's what happens once a week. You put your trash and recycling in a non-recyclable bag on the curb. We drive by, a person jumps off the truck and he throws it all into the truck. Each truck does this about 900 times per day. We do the same thing for your recycling. You'll notice in this picture that this is pretty typical of what we see when we're driving around the City of Columbia. You can see some of our black trash bags that we provide to citizens. You'll see some white kitchen bags. You'll see some cardboard boxes, kitty litter bins, uh, some of those styrofoam coolers, and some of our blue recycling bags that some of them look to not be full of recyclables. Those materials all go out to the landfill or the material recovery facility. At the landfill, we tear open the bags so that they break down faster. At the MRF, which is the materials recovery facility, we tear up the non-recyclable recycling bag and the recyclables are sorted in bales for market. In Columbia, we have a dual stream recycling system. So this means that we have one bag for your container recyclables, those one and two plastics, uh, glass, aluminum, steel, and tin containers. And the other stream is our fiber recycling, the paper, newspaper, and cardboard that we throw out every day. What you see in this picture is our container recycling side. On the left is the bags that have just been dropped off by the trucks. You'll see two gentlemen standing there. Those are some of our MRF employees and they're opening up the bag. Recyclable materials go up that conveyor belt and over to the other side to be sorted into their type of value market. To the right of the conveyor belt are all the materials that are not going to be recycled. The blue bags that we have are theoretically allowed to go back to their where we purchase them from. However, they've been contaminated and they have to go to the landfill. We also have a lot of materials that are thrown in with the recycling that are not actually recyclable. The bags then go to the landfill. So you'll see the blue bags there as well as additional trash that have been dropped off for that day. One of the big things that we know about in recycling and sustainability is that you have to make a system easy for people to do it and you have to give them an incentive to do it. Some people recycle because they feel passionate about the environment. Others do it because it's easy for them to do. One of the things we do not have in Colombia is an incentive to do it because if you look at this picture of a duplex, this house pays $15.42 a month to throw away their trash and recycling. And so does this house. It's not an equitable system because both are paying the same amount regardless of how much they're throwing away. Now when reviewing any system, it's important to compare ourselves to some peer cities and cities that are leaders on the issues. 
For me, I compare how we do on sustainability issues, and I'm very interested in how we compare on diversion rates. Diversion refers to the materials that we throw out that are not going into the landfill. So these are our recyclables, our compostables, and our mulch site materials, and so on. I'm interested in how other cities, how much do they divert from their landfills? Here's a comparison where we're looking at, you know, Ann Arbor, Fayetteville, Lawrence, Austin, Portland, Jeff City, Minneapolis, and the City of Columbia. That last bar, that's the City of Columbia. 17% is our diversion rate. You'll notice that the national average is 34.5%. We've been at 17% for the last 10 years. Now we've normalized this data where we can. Everyone does their numbers a little differently and everyone collect, collects a few different types of materials. The bottom line is we fall below everyone on everything. So what are these comparison cities doing? How are these other communities performing so much better than us? Well, like us, they had to make a change. They went from this to this. These are an automated collection, basically roll cart that they put in. Now, these communities had a problem that they wanted to improve. Their leaders set a goal for improvement and their staff worked to create a plan to meet that goal. They learned from their community and they designed a system for those neighborhoods. These plans involved automated collection, pay as you throw, and often single stream recycling. Now an automated collection, in, in this case, we have roll carts would go to the curb and people would put their materials in and our trucks would drive up and one guy could drive the truck and operate the machine to dump the cart into his car. In communities with pay-as-you-throw programs, they might have the cart system where you pay for the size of the cart, or they might have a bag system. And residents are charged for the amount that they throw out. They're charged for their size of their cart, or they're charged for the amount of bags that they throw away. This creates a direct economic incentive to recycle more and to generate less waste. Now with single stream recycling, that refers to a system in which all of your recycled materials go into one bin. And to move to that, we would have to redo the material recovery facility. But I think it's a direction that we could go in for Columbia. Now here are the diversion rates before and after implementing an automated collection system. You'll see that most communities had like a 10% increase. Some of these did this over a, such a short span of three years, and some did it longer over 10 years. All we know is that by improving the system and way that you collect it, you can make it more equitable for the utility as well as more easy for our customers to use. Now to go an example of a leader in this area, Austin, Texas is really a leader in how they do solid waste, or rather their resource recovery department. In 2008, through st strategic planning process, the city committed to a zero waste goal by 2040. They make recycling easy by providing a single stream system to their residents. They mandate recycling from the commercial sector, including rental properties, and they control their cost of collection with automated systems. They incentivize waste reduction with a variable pricing, or pay as you throw, and most important, they have goals and are willing to adopt the needed changes to reach these goals. If you look at the comparison between Austin and Columbia, you'll see it. We are at half the rate of their diversion rate. We are two-thirds higher in their expenditure per capita. The tonnage per capita is about the same, so it's not like they're throwing away less than we are. And their customer satisfaction, let me actually talk about this a little bit more, it's the same. And what we've noticed that across the country, customer satisfaction rates for solid waste are always between about 75 and 85 percent satisfaction. And the theory is, people don't really care how you take away their trash, they're just happy that you take it away. Now all those communities that we compared, they have trends of improvement, they have goals. We have neither. We have other goals, we have renewable energy goals, non-motorized goals. So what is our goal? Well we want to be on the other side of that dotted line. As staff liaison for the Environment and Energy Commission, I asked them if they had a goal for diversion rates, and they gave me this statement. The Environment and Energy Commission recommends to the Columbia City Council that they set a goal to increase the diversion rates from its current 17% to at least the national average of 34.5%.
that would be great. You know, I have a goal too. My goal is to increase our diversion rates. Let's try to do it 20% by 2020 to increase it so that we'd be at about 36% in five years. You know, if we have that sort of success, we could be on a path to zero waste, maybe 90% diversion rate by 2050. I started working with this project with Public Works because, you know, I knew that transitioning to automated collection or pay as you throw would increase our community's diversion rates. What I didn't really realize was the added benefit to my coworkers, to our employees who do the collection. When we discuss sustainability, I often reference the triple bottom line, people, planet, and profit. So our employees are the people that would benefit most by a change in our current trash collection system. And I think we should give them that opportunity. I'm gonna kick it back to John Glasscock because no one knows better the benefit that could happen for our public works employees than their director. Thank you, Barbara. So what's the benefit that I see as a public works director in charge of these guys? I want to see happy, healthy employees because I can tell you that on our current system, they are not. On the day which we were recording this, I had to send out this staff in zero degree weather to pick up trash in the city of Columbia. That's not a happy time for these individuals. I know Barbara said we didn't have a lot of trends in reference to improvements in recycling. Well, we do have trends and they're not positive in the staffing. City of Columbia residential staff has an average turnover rate of 68% and it's a trend that's not sustainable. I want to correct one of the slides. The FY10 was not figured in that 68% as it was an outlier year when we made a reorganization change. In contrast, as Barbara's talked about Austin, their turnover rate on average is 6%. The citywide turnover rate for the city of Columbia is at 8%. So the data is clear that what we're currently doing is not sustainable for the future. The guy in this slide was taken back in the summer. And as I said before, we have 68% turnover. He has been he has moved on to the sewer utility division and is doing a different job than throwing 50 pound bags of trash. Imagine that individual picking up 900 bags that can weigh up to 50 pounds each. That's a lot of weight and it's a good gym workout for anybody that wants to try it. We also have the highest worker comp claims of any division in the city. In the last 10 years, the solid waste division has averaged $310,000 in workers' comp claims each year. When Ann Arbor went to automated collection, the workers' comp claims were nearly eliminated. Lawrence, Kansas transitioned to an automated roll cart trash collection and resulted in a 65% reduction in solid waste workers' comp claims. Also, Minneapolis dramatically reduced workers' comp claims and recycling employees by 62% by moving to an automated single-stream recycling system. As I mentioned at the beginning, we have two major issues, recycling and staffing. To answer these problems, we have developed a timeline for moving forward. We have a plan for research, outreach, and engagement to design a new system that works for all of Columbia. Let me go over a few of the milestones of the five-year plan. So starting in January, we're going to start accepting all plastics, one through seven, to increase our plastic recycling in the city of Columbia. Also in the spring, we will be having this conversation with the community. We will have online engagements and ward meetings with our citizens to design a system that works for them. In March of 2015, with your help, we can start this process to study how we can change our material recovery facility, or MRF, 
in order to process more recyclables efficiently. In October of 2016, implementation of the trash collection plan will begin through the budgeting process. So as you can see, as we get out to October 2019, we plan to be fully automated with recycling implemented to go to a single stream recycling. This timeline assumes the city will continue to do trash management in-house. It assumes that we will not be having any layoffs or any job losses. If council chooses to outsource though, a new timeline will need to be produced and developed for that. So as you can see with our current system, we have low and stagnant diversion rates. We have very high workers' compensation claims, large turnover, and everybody pays the same amount no matter what you set out on the curb. With an automated collection system, we hope to increase our diversion rate, reduce our workers' comp claims as described as other cities, reduce our turnover rate, and it's a true pay-as-you-throw system. Recycling is included in the base charge. We're looking at three carts sizes, charging $12 to $20 a month. We're not taking away your bags. You get to keep your bag system if you want it. You'll be paying around $12.50 for a base charge plus $1.50 per bag every time you set it out. So as we compare the two systems, it's truly, as Barbara describes it, a triple bottom line impact. We're increasing diversion rates, creating a safer working environment, and setting up a true utility where customers pay for the amount of trash they produce, and are encouraging recycling and consider what they put out as a resource, not as a waste. So with Council's guidance, we will spend the time and resources on research and outreach. We ask that you, Council, that you give us your goal. We will work to implement the strategy you requested. We need your help. Our process is not sustainable. We can't keep people hired and can't pay them what we should be paying them. Not with the system that we have today. There's going to come a time when we can't find the people to do this job. We need a new system. We cannot afford to pick up whatever you throw away at the same cost. Do you agree with Barbara's goal of 20% increase in our diversion rate by 2020? We want to get started and we need some answers. Say yes and we will take a year to figure out the details. That's our, sta that's our job as staff. We will listen to your public answer the questions, and get support for increased recycling and making the job safer. John and I want to thank you guys for listening to the presentation that we gave on January 5th to the City Council, and we look to have your feedback. The conversation starts with you. Our current contact is Steve Sapp, our Public Information Officer with the City of Columbia Public Works. His phone number is 874-7217. You can also email him at ses at gocolumbiamo.com. We will also be setting up a website to start the online engagement. Look to www.comotrash.com in the future to find all of this information and the engagement ideas that are coming from our public. Thank you again, and let's make a better Columbia.